welcome to Wine Soundtrack South Africa. Listen to the passion with which producers narrate their winery and their world. In 30 Answers, discover their stories, personalities and passions. Hello friends and listeners of Wine Soundtrack, this is Marina Kahlo and today I'm sitting with Mornay Frey from Dele Graf Estate. A warm welcome Mornay. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Hi Marina, welcome to Dele. Yes, yeah, um, I'm Mornay Frey, the senior winemaker at Dele Graf. Um, yeah, and it's a fantastic property here in Stellenbosch, um, in the fantastic Banuk Valley, the small ward of, of Stellenbosch, one of the youngest winemaking wards in Stellenbosch. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to the interview. Thanks so much. Monet, let's start with the farm itself. How many hectares of land do you have under vine? Uh, in total, we have about 16 to 16 and a half hectares. It's a very small farm, focusing mainly on Cabernet and Chardonnay. It's about six hectares of Cab, four hectares of Chardonnay, and some Sauvignon Blanc, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, a bit of Petit, but Cab, Sav, and uh, Chardonnay were far the most um, important varieties on the farm. And then roughly how much wine do you produce from that? Uh, so we do about, in, in hectares, about 130 uh, a ton to 130 tons each year. Uh, but we do also have some vineyards that we buy fruits from in Stellenbosch in the valley to, for other wines as well. And then outside of South Africa, where can our listeners find your wines? So we've got quite a broad distribution internationally. Um, the, uh, the Europe, of course, being a very traditional market for us. Um, you can find it in Germany, uh, Holland, uh, the UK is especially quite quite good for us. And of course in America, uh, we export there and then to a lot of smaller um, islands uh, for weather, like red resorts and those places. So I'm a lady and we know Diamonds are a girl's best friend. What is the link uh, between Dele Graf and the famous Diamond family? Oh, so, Lawrence Graf, the owner of Dele, he bought the property of uh, in 2003 and he's the president of the Graf Diamonds International and it's a big um, luxury jeweler. Um, and yeah, he bought the property in 2003 and so that's a connection. And there's a beautiful diamond shop downstairs um, in the in the foyer area of the estate that is really something to uh, titillate the senses, that's for sure. When I coming over to you, do you have a first memory relevant to wine uh, at all that you can recall? Yeah, I grew up in a very small town, uh, about 300 kilometers um, from here in the town called Kallersdorp, and it's just very famous for fortified wines. And as a young youngster, I used to see the wine making and the, the vineyards all around me. And from a young age, I also started working in, a, in the cellar door at the, one of the wineries in Kallersdorp and started doing cellar tours. So my, my love for wine started from a very young age, um, and at the legal age, of course. <laughs> but it's just really been exposed to that whole tradition and culture of wine, seeing the tractors during harvest time going through the town and the village and it's, it's, it's been a part of my life for a very long time. It is, uh, for our listeners, so Carlitz Dorp, um, where Mornay is from, is just this beautiful little gem of a place. There's lots of ostriches and, um, <laughs> and it, it's a really stunning area, a little bit further afield from, from where most of our winelands are, but it's quite a special place to visit if you ever get the opportunity. Now Mornay, I know you've traveled the world abroad quite extensively promoting your wine. But along the way, I'm quite sure you've drunk a lot of wines uh, from other international producers. Are there any wines that have stood out along your travels that you'd like to share with us? Sure, it's quite. It's, I really enjoy wine, like all of us, and it's quite quite difficult to single out one specific experience or one specific style. But I've, I mean, Dalhe is very much focused on Bordeaux varieties and um, and also the Chardonnay side. So definitely, I've spent a lot of time living and working in, in Saint Emilion in France. So it was also my first ever visit overseas was to Saint Emilion when I was um, 20 years old. And it was since then been my real special place, coming from a small town in the Karoo and then you get to this fantastic wine growing region. So in total I've spent about a year in Saint Emilion working there. So I'm very much influenced by that kind of um, the wine from Bordeaux and um, especially also then even more so Burgundy. Um, it's very kind of more 
more European style winemaking, then they'd also enjoy the wines from New Zealand and Australia. They all, everybody makes great wine, you know, so it's difficult to, uh, to just single out one area. I think, um, I think wine lovers are definitely spoiled for choice and uh, yeah, wherever you go you can definitely find something amazing. So coming back to the cellar, what is the most expensive bottle of wine we can find here at Dede Graf? Um, yeah, so we've, since 2009 vintage we, we, we made this um, block of, uh, from Cabernet from this one vineyard and um, Mr. Graf was always very keen to, to have a very kind of wine um, from the estate that kind of just showcased the whole ethos and ideas of Del Air. And we started with the Lawrence Craft Reserve in 2009, which is a 100% Cabernet from a single vineyard. And yeah, that's just been a, quite a success for us since, since then. We were also quite, quite brave to, um, to, to have that wine released in South Africa, that, that price point currently sitting around, I would say about $200 um, today a bottle. And it was definitely one of the few expensive wines in, back then. And yeah, so we're very proud of this wine. It's doing extremely well for us. Um, it's a wine that's getting quite a bit of a, a great following, um, not just locally, but also internationally. It is definitely one of South Africans' icon wines. I can, I can say that for sure. Now I know you can never ask a winemaker which is his favorite child. Mm -hmm. However, is there one of your wines in the cellar right now that gives you a lot of joy that you just kind of go and take a, take a sample out of a, a barrel or a tank that you just go, oh my word, this is so exciting? I think the, it's, like, it's true, I mean, we make quite a few wines here on the state, but I think my favorite at the moment to work on and think of and research on is our Chardonnay. It's definitely for us a um, work in progress. Mornay, I know you can't uh, ask a winemaker which is his favorite child. However, there must be a wine in the cellar that gives you a lot of satisfaction right now. That one that, one that you keep coming back to the barrel or the tank and you just draw a little sample and it gives you, gives you a little tingle down your spine. Which one is that for you at the moment? No, it's difficult to, to single out a single wine. But I mean, if I think of one, and because you asked, I think the Chardonnay, the Delhi Chardonnay, the Banuk Chardonnay for us is um, quite a special wine. And it's a wine that I really enjoy making. It's a wine that I'm learning a lot from. So we've done a lot of um, replantings and researching the clones. I'm experimenting with a lot of different coopers from other Burgundy or from Bordeaux style coopers. And it's really kind of a work in progress, but we're kind of starting to see the results now after all these years of, of just understanding the vineyards. And our, our Chardonnay vineyards are also becoming a bit of age now, so they're really starting to produce quite, quite special fruit. And the special th thing about our Chardonnay um, here in Stellenbosch or the Adelia is that our altitude an aspect on the farm is very special. Delhi is quite a mountainous vineyard. Um, we have predominantly north-facing vineyards, but that's for our reds. But our east and west, west, western slopes are sp sp it's much cooler slopes, and our ele elevation starts about 390 meters above sea level. And we've got Chardonnay as high as almost 500 meters above sea level on the farm. So we do have this really brilliant, bright, fresh style of Chardonnay on the estate. Um, elevated the city to because of the altitude and just really making a fantastic one and it's every year just trying to improve on that. So yeah the Chardonnay is by far my kind of my new my new baby um, just in terms of just learning more about the vineyards and um, understanding the wine better and yeah just, just to give people a, a true classical example of Chardonnay. Mm. Terroir driven completely. Absolutely. So Monet as a consumer what do you enjoy drinking? Red, wine, bubbly? What do you tend to turn to? I'm a big fan of um, Chardonnay and of course uh, German Rieslings is also one of my favorite uh, varieties and there's some really good examples of South African Rieslings as well. We, we tend to drink more white wine at home and then our climate is, but leans itself more towards um, white wine than reds but we do enjoy nice Cabernet, Bordeaux style blends. I'm not a big Shiraz fan of, fan of, unfortunately. So I really enjoy a bit more the Cabernet and then also the more the light, the Grenache Noirs. Um, that's kind of all that lighter style of red, but definitely more white. Yeah. And 
Talking then about food when it comes to wine, you've got two stunning restaurants here on the farm, which are, are really, I mean, the views and the food and the service, it's, it's absolutely divine. But when it comes to food pairing, do you have a recipe that you stick to? Do you think it's a case of trial and error? What is your philosophy when it comes to pairing with food? I always tell the chefs here that um, the wine is already made, so we can make changes daily on the food just to kind of really fine tune um, the, the experience. So that's kind of kind of the philosophy we have here. My, the wines we make on Del Rio is very much focused on on, on consumption. It's focused on having it most of the wines been sold off off the estate in our restaurants. So this is very strong fruit, uh, strong food focus. In stylist, stylistically decisions, style decisions that we make um, in, the, in the wine making. So yeah, it's definitely exciting. Um, I think most of our wines uh, off the off site is, is also sold mainly in restaurants around the world. Um, it's very, that focus is very kind of primary. It helps a lot if you know where who's going to drink and where people are going to drink your wine. So you've had this amazing food and wine experience and maybe, maybe, just maybe, you might have overindulged a little bit on the wine front. Do you perhaps have your Mornay Frey ultimate hangover cure? Just, just uh, the hair of the dog, just another glass of wine, I suppose. That, that tends to, to work the best, but it's just delaying the hangover. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, just uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of a, just a Bloody Mary, and that sorts me out in the morning if I have to. So definitely that. That one, I like that one. That one seems to be a recurring, a recurring response. <laughs> Monet, what would you say a non-wine drinker loses out if they don't enjoy wine? So I think it's, you know, it's, it's difficult, but it's, I think the, uh, the more the wine flow, I think the more kind of calm one gets and the more just like it's just more fun just to, to be slightly more intoxicated than just being sober, I, <laughs> I would say. But it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, if you come to Del Air and not drink wine, I think it's, it's a bit strange, but... Uh, just <laughs> okay, so picture this. We're sitting outside on the deck, drinking a glass of wine, and a UFO comes in to land in front of Del Air Graf. Out piles a whole bunch of aliens, and they are thirsty. What are you going to offer them to drink? Well, we'd like, like anybody else arriving on the estate sitting on the deck, we're going to start with a bottle of sparkling wine and then um, see if they, if they enjoy that and then we take the, the journey from there. I mean, maybe they, I don't know, <laughs> definitely not water. I don't think so. <laughs> then coming back into the cellar, do you have any good luck rituals or... Any activities that you do during harvest time that you're, with your team that is kind of synonymous and kind of adds to the spirit and the excitement um, and just the overall feel of what you do here at harvest time? No, it's a great energy in the cellar during harvest, also during the whole year. I mean, I've got a silly ritual and it's a bit weird, but I... I, I say good morning to the cellar every morning when I walk in. It's a bit of a strange, strange habit, and if I don't do it, I feel bad about it. Um, so it's just, and the team is we quite, we quite uh, been together as a team combined for, for many years. Um, Kali and uh, with the culture myself this year did our 12 vintage together, and so that's a very key, important part of, of I think of a relationship and making great wine. And but to fun to fun times we do yell a lot, but in a good way we do make like funny jokes and uh, have some funny Afrikaans phrases that just some key things for the uh, for the team to to, uh, to see it almost as a as an order, but they kind of it's all in a fun way. It's just difficult to explain, but in Afrikaans it's quite 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 easy. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so. We're sipping away at a beautiful Delegraph Chardonnay, which I'm enjoying very, very much. However, if we were to open a, an old bottle of red wine, in the same way that a fortune teller would read tea leaves that stay behind in the cup, if you had to read a message left in the sediment of an old red wine, 
What is the message that you would get for the future? Yeah, crazy. I, 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 he's on the spot now. I have no idea actually how to answer this, but let's let's try. Um, just not actually for gluten. <laughs> <laughs> Monet, we're enjoying a glass of your beautiful Chardonnay here. Um, however, if we were to open a, an older bottle of Delegraph wine, a red wine, and there's sediment left over in the bottle, a bottom of the glass, in a similar way that a fortune teller would read tea leaves in the, in the bottom of a cup, what would that sediment in that glass tell you about the future that lies ahead? So I'm, I'm more a, a person of history than the future, um, but I mean, yeah, hopefully when the, if the, one of the older red wines that we have on Dallaire that do throw out some sediment is wines that was made by some other uh, big winemakers in, of the past, the Brevera Arts of the Wilts and Chris Keats and all those guys. And I mean, it's definitely uh, some the legacy those guys have left and still have in the industry and so maybe hopefully that little bit of sentiment I can read something that a piece of Mona that will be stay behind in, uh, on Dal Air and for the next next one maker to see in the sediment I suppose. I like that one a lot. So Mona when you're not working what do you do in your free time? Well, we got two very busy kids, and I really enjoy. We really enjoy spending time with them, and um, yeah, we like to, we like to just be outside, and uh, we en we enjoy um, just hiking with the kids and spend time with them, and also other big pa passion of ours is entertaining friends at home and just cooking and enjoying life, and and traveling is also a big part of of, of our family um, to just travel. My wife's from Germany, and we get to see the family quite often, and with that, we're always working a bit of a trip somewhere, and. Um, just, just, just being not at home the whole time. Yeah, I think um, it's one of the big perks of working in the wine industry is the opportunity for travel, which really is, is something definitely very special. In terms of sport, do you support any sporting teams or individuals or anything like that? No, I think growing up in this small town in, in Kalasdorp, I was we are from the start of my school career to the last day of school. We were only 10 in the class. And it was a very small school, so it's the team sports was not really a big thing there because of the, there was not enough people to make up a team. <laughs> so, so definitely it's quite a unique little town. So I mean, I think part of that, that also kind of sparked this not, no, no real interest in kind of following big football or rugby or all of that. I do enjoy a bit of like, the social part of spending it with friends, but from a um, kind of kind of a hobby, it's not really a hobby, or it's not really a big interest of mine. It's just yeah. a bit strange, but it's it's definitely a, a different take on it, and it makes perfect sense why you say you know it's just not something I grew up with, and therefore it's not part of my kind of life. Very very interesting. Um, in terms of music, are you into music? Is there any specific genres or artists or groups or anything that you particularly enjoy listening to? No, I love music and it's, it depends on the amount of wine that we drink normally, the, the type of music that comes out and also about the company. We, uh, we've got a few friends that that really, it's just strange, we, look, we do like a bit of kind of classic country music and just kind of Dolly Parts and it sounds crazy but it they really, it's quite fun. I mean, this morning I was listening to Cranberries on my way to work and I think I'm, I'm a, born in 78 so that era of music is just fantastic with the, the kind of the um, Cranberries and Kurt Cobain and all those guys, they're really quite, quite fun. Yeah, that alternative time, fun, yeah. fun and games. Um, movies? Are you into movies at all? Any top movies that you really enjoy that kind of get you going? Yeah, no, so we, I get to see a lot of children's movies these days with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> because I kind of annex the television when we watch it. But yeah, definitely, I mean, like Sunday is quite nice for us to, to watch just a nice, relaxed movie and just spend some time with the kids. You just mentioned your kids. If you could give your children any piece of sage advice for life, what would that be? Sure, they, they, they ask me all this, I think it's not one question. <laughs> they can't stop me, I think. Speaking of your kids, do you have any sage piece of advice that you would give them to use in life as they grow up? 
knowing just eat all your vegetables, <laughs> but um, no, I think in terms of just spend quality of time, be outdoors. I mean, it's just crazy these days the amount of time that I see kids on, on screens and stuff, and and we we uh, try not to them to try not to expose them to too much of that, and so that we as a family make the point of having them outside and just having just like honest fun and just playing and and, and keep. Walk barefoot and, and, and keep being dirty. That's, 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 that's the key. Yeah? It really is one of the perks of living in this country, is the, the, the barefoot childhood life that we can offer our children here. Mm-hmm. It's quite something special. So if you were to go out on a very romantic dinner date with your beautiful wife, Steffi, what wine would you order from the menu? And not Telegraph or Dimas Dahl. <laughs> <laughs> no, we um, again. I mean, we both enjoy white wines, and definitely we've got a few kind of favourites in restaurants, uh, Chardonnays, and I mean, there's in, we see in South Africa more and more um, foreign wines on the wine list, which is really fantastic, and it's a bit of something different. But I think um, she enjoys Sauvignon Blanc, and I've cut my teeth a bit on Sauvignon Blanc, so I try to try to, our Chardonnay is quite a nice um, alternative. Um, to kind of for both of us, but yeah, it's just, I really enjoy like like nervous, steely kind of slaty styles of, of Chardonnay. I'm not a big fan of the old, heavy-handed, rich yellow style Chardonnay. So we we both have very similar taste in wine. And of course, South African Chenin is fantastic. There's always it's always the, I think you led by what the wine list have, um, what's on the wine list. But it's there's some really good good whites on, on our South African wine list these days. It's difficult to to single one out. It really is. I struggle with that as well. It's, uh, we really are spoiled for choice. Morden, what is your proudest professional achievement? I, just, I don't I mean, it's, we've, as a farm, it's, we've been very lucky with great accolades and awards and um, but I'm, I'm not, I, just, I don't want, I don't enjoy like singling out specific things because that's not the way we we work, our uh, wife work, do things. But for me, what makes me extremely proud being on Dalair is to come in middle of harvest, February, we were this most of the time when the, 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 the estate is on its most busiest, to go walk onto the deck and we have a restaurant full of 140 people drinking Dalair wine. And that, just, just that moment with me is a very proud moment, just to see people enjoying life, drinking the wine that we make here and just having that great experience on the estate. And it's just, for me, that. Like it's heartwarming when we see that, and we to, to hear the compliments from everybody how, how how the wine tastes and stuff. And then wine drinking future. What kind of wines do you think will be drunk in the year two thousand five hundred? Sure, two thousand five hundred. That's quite a while. Um, I think I'm just like for now where I see trends going, and I think we I've been quite a big fan of that kind of really fresh wines, you know, wines that's not heavy handed, wines that's not over, over extracted and overworked, uh, wines that's honest, wines that's clean, bright, and shout the character with, instead of the, the cellar. Um, I think that kind of the purity and, uh, of the wine is definitely a, a fantastic um, kind of evolution what we see in the winemaking or internationally. Um, but yeah, it's, I can't look that, that far in my wine serum and glass, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those aliens that have just been having yeah. sparkling wine and the rest of the Delegraph range of wines, they've had such a wonderful time that they are taking you back in their spaceship with them. They're taking you back to their, their uh, um, planet and they've asked you to bring three wines with any three wines in the whole wide world. Which three wines are you taking with? So, definitely 89 Haute Brion. That's my favorite wine I've ever had. And I've had, learned, well, have you had, had it a few times again after I had it about a few years ago. Um, and then, of course, our very famous Winter Constance from, from Constantia. I think that wine I'll keep for, for later. It's going to age well up there. And, um, yeah, I think the, 
the, the last one will probably I'm a big fan of fortifieds so I think either a tawny port from either from the from my, my, my hometown Kalasdorp or maybe something from, from Portugal but because uh, those ones are just like sipping ones and it's 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 you can you go three bottles is very little for the trip so we need to take something that will stretch us a bit <laughs> It'll have to be magnums of that. <laughs> you can take the boy out of Carlet's Dorp, but uh, that will stay in his blood. Okay, we're just about done. Um, I'd like to play a quick little game with you. You said that you enjoy um, music. So I'm going to name three grape varieties, and I'd like you to pair each one with a song or an artist or a genre that you think best represents that variety. So, Chardonnay has to be at the top of the list. Oh, Chardonnay, um, Olivia Newton John. But crazy, got well, racy, yeah, it's fantastic. I like that. Blonde and kind of sexy and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that, I get that. Um, Cabernet Sauvignon. I was asked the same question at the, at the event the other day, and I said, um, "Who was the cowboy again?" Oh, that's not that's not that's not music. It's a, it's a film star. Sorry. Um, no, definitely, I would say probably Metallica. Yeah, Metallica. Mm. Okay, something dark and loud and yeah. excellent, excellent. And then let's throw in something a little bit different. What about um, a a Certico? Certico. That's something Greek. Um, sure. Let's think. Poof. I don't have no idea. A Certico. Um, huh? Abba. <laughs> well, if you think of Mamma Mia and the movies, they were set there, yeah. Mamma Mia. Yeah. No, it can work. No, but it's... Yeah, I mean, the Sertica, I'm a big fan of the Santorini wines. Um, they're quite, quite aromatic and spicy and it's all with volcanic soils. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just something fun, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, Mornay. Um, would you like to remind our listeners where they can find Delegraph online, social media, and if they were to ever visit Stellenbosch? Yeah, so just um, delegraph.co.za, um, that's our kind of website. And of course, Instagram, Facebook, all those places, all the social media platforms. We've got a great team who, who keeps people well informed of things happening on the estate. And yeah, so thank you very much. I think it's a for those of you, please come visit. It's, a, it's quite exciting and a beautiful little part of, part of Salamos and part of South Africa. Indeed it is. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to a new episode of Wine Soundtrack South Africa. For details and updates, visit our website, winesoundtrack.com.